Hello, hello guys. Today I am taking a look at the patch notes for the Merkmeyer PTS update as it is coming out just this morning. Now, I myself am just downloading the PTS, but I did want to give you guys a little bit of feedback on what I am thinking about this patch just from taking a look at these patch notes. And then, of course, as this week goes on, you guys will see a lot of PTS content from me, so don't even worry about it. But anyway, let's take a look at this. So I did want to hone in on a few things that uh, I wanted to talk about in this new PTS. And uh, part of that is, of course, we're going to be taking a look at the new sets. And I think that's where we will be starting here. So, of course, every new PTS iteration adds new sets, new achievements, new dungeons, and stuff like that. We're going to focus on the kind of nitty-gritty numbers stuff. Not that, not too much, don't worry. But anyway, let's take a look at it. We have got the first set here. The, the Bright Throats Boast, a new light armor set, and this set here is kind of a match of the Bone Pirate set, but for a light armor build. Now, this is particularly good, I think, for light armor, because unlike a stamina build, light armor really benefits from stacking Max Magicka. Now, that being said, there's some sad news coming in about damage shields, guys, but we'll get to that soon. Um, so that set I really like. It's a good set to see in the game. We've got the Dead Waters Guile, Weapon Damage, Max Stam, Max health um when an enemy dies within two seconds of being damaged by you you gain five ultimate this is going to be better for pve i think in pvp this could be good for bombing if you're using an alt based bomb setup or something like that but i don't know for group pvp maybe for solo pvp not so much champions of the hist we've got weapon damage max stam max stam gain minor heroism at all times while you're in combat so a stamina version for the minor heroism i like this set that being said, stamina builds do have a lot of access to minor heroism already. So, uh, And this is a heavy armor set too, so that's not so bad. The next uh, sets that we have are the crafted sets. Gravestalker coming in with max magicka, max stam, and max health. Enemies that you damage have a 10% chance to drop a gravestalk for 6 seconds after they've died. And that will restore magicka and stamina. Cool sustain set that they added here. I actually really like this. Um, and this is great for sustain for... I don't know. You can do a lot with this set. So this will be interesting to see how well this uh, kind of works and if you have to synergize for this uh, resource return or not. So we'll see that when, uh, I guess, when we test it on the PTS. Naga Shaman. We've got Healing Taken, Healing Done, Max Magicka. When you cast the Damage Shield ability, you gain Minor Mending, Minor Vitality for 6 seconds, increasing your Healing Done and Healing Received by 8%. This can occur once every 6 seconds. So this is 8% and 8%, so 16% healing, 2% off the healing, so 18%, and then Healing Taken, I believe, is 4%. So 22% increased healing to yourself, and uh, about half of that to other players about a 10 percent to other players so yeah really really good healing set i'm excited to see this set in the game really nice and it's just max magica here so you could actually um use this on a non max max magica build or like a health based build that uses a shield or even a stamina based build that has access to a shield um if you play like a health based stam build but yeah cool set i think cool set we'll have to see it is when you cast a damage shield so Damage shields, like I said, in a sad place this patch. The Lost Legion, we've got Max Stam, Max Magicka, Weapon and Spell Damage in the four-piece. And then when you successfully block, you gain three uses of Empower, increasing the damage of your next three light attacks by 40%. Interesting set. Interesting for a back bar, um, block bar, or something like that. And then front bar damage with your light attacks. Very cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not uh, I'm not too, too impressed by this guy, though. It's just kind of cool, but I don't think it'll be super great. We have got some new sets coming in, the Radial Uppercut, Physical Penetration, and then Uppercut deals 50% of its damage to two enemies near your primary target. Does it still stun those extra guys? I hope not. If, if it does, I think it might be a bit too much. We'll see what Xenomax did with it. Gallant Charge, reduce the cost of Shield Charge by 25% and reduce the cost of your next one hand and Shield ability by 100%. This is... yeah. Really cheap Shield Charge, and then you get a free one hand and Shield ability to follow it up. Really nice set. The two pieces, physical and spell resist. I really like this. This is going to be a really good set for PvP, I think. The next set that we have is the Spectral Cloak. So this is the dual wield um, augmenting weapon. And uh, it gives stamina recovery. And then Blade Cloak will grant you major protection for three seconds, reducing the damage you take by 30%. Plus the change to uh, how Shuffle works now. Um, yeah, Blade Cloak is... 
I don't know. I like this set. I like this because it turns Blade Cloak into a really good defensive tanky ability, especially against AoEs. So I really like this set for that reason. And uh, yeah, this is cool for like back bar dual wield or something. Even have stamina recovery. Seems kind of neat. The Razor Shot. Now this is something that I want to talk about because this is going to be a really good set. We got Weapon Crit. And then scatter shot applies a bleed after a delay that deals 40 after a delay that deals 40% of your initial attack every two seconds for four seconds, increasing in duration to a maximum of 12 seconds, depending on how far away you are from your attack. Now the radius on magnum shot and scatter shot or the range, sorry, has also been increased to 28 meters. Yeah, this gives you essentially another spammable bow ability and it's very strong. And this set here is going to put a really powerful bleed on this. I can see the Magnum Shot, Poison Injection, Bow Build being very, very strong. This is something that I will be trying on the PTS. I'm really excited to see how good this bleed is. Yeah, I really like this. The bleed might be too strong. We'll have to see. But I really like this. The next set that we have is the Wild Impulse. So we get Spell Penetration on the One Piece. Really nice for a damage build. And then we get the cost of impulse reduced by 10%. And then it adds the lingering elemental damage on the targets, dealing 10k damage over 9 seconds. So 3,333 of each element. That's awesome. Not only do you get to deal a nice big beefy 10k dot to things that you hit with your impulse, which is a massive dot to put on them, but on top of it, you can deal the uh, elemental negative effects as well, such as the burning, the concussion, or the freeze, which is really, really nice. The chilled, sorry. So this is going to be a really good set for like an AoE impulse build. I can see this being very good in PvP as well. The Mender's Ward. Yeah, another really awesome new set. This one is for Healing Ward, the Resto Staff. Magicka Recovery, Steadfast Ward applies major vitality to your target for three seconds, increasing the healing taken on them by 30%. Enough said. This is going to be really strong with uh, a resto staff, making Healing Ward really, really powerful. And Healing Ward is the one shield in the game that did not get the nasty shield treatment. And we'll be getting to that really soon. Oh my gosh. And then, of course, they added new uh, PvP sets as well. And these PvP sets will be rotated in, uh, in your Rewards for the Worthy as a replacement for the current sets that we have now. And the current sets we have now in Rewards for the Worthy, you can always buy from, uh, from Cyrodiil vendors if you want to get more of them in the coming patch. But this is going to be replacing those. And there are some really good sets here. So let's start out with the Indomitable Fury, Max Mag, Max Mag, Stam Recovery. After breaking free, you gain minor protection and minor heroism for 7 seconds, reducing your damage taken by 8%, and generate one ultimate every 1.5 seconds. This is going to be a really cool set. Really, really good, I think, for a Magicka build. You need the Max Magicka, especially in PvP. You need that stam recovery, too. And then you get that minor protection and the minor heroism. Looking at Mag DK here, missing out on both these buffs, so that's really, really nice, I think. Spell Strategist. Max mag, spell damage, spell damage. When you deal damage with a light attack, you place a mark over your target for 5 seconds, granting you 500 spell damage against your marked target. This can occur once every 4 seconds. You can back bar this and run a damage set on your front bar. Yeah, this is absolute monstrosity. This is going to be so good. Back bar resto staff. Very, very strong set. And uh, all of these sets, I really want to point out, which what makes them really sweet is the fact that you can get them at a really low level because they're PvP sets. You can easily get a five-piece set of this gear by the time you hit, like, level 15. So really nice, I think, for that reason, too. So let's keep moving on. Battlefield Acrobat, the medium armor set. Stam Recov, Stam Recov, Max Stam, reduce the cost of all abilities by 6%. So it's kind of a stamina version of Alteration Mastery. But they are mostly regen-based, so you can use either or, depending on if you need the Max Stam or Max Meg. Yeah, this might be a little bit too strong on a stam build because stam builds already have lower costs than mag builds. We'll have to see how this plays out with cost reduction, jewelry stack, etc. If it becomes a little bit too strong, but uh, it's nice that we finally get this stamina equivalent of this set as well. The Soldier of Anguish is the next set we have. Weapon damage, weapon crit, weapon damage. When you deal damage with a melee attack, you have a 25% chance to traumatize your enemy, negating the next 5,500 points of healing for 4 seconds. And this can occur once every four seconds. Yeah, this is going to be really good. And this is going to be hard to deal with XV1. Traumatize seems like it's going to be a debuff, so you should be able to purge it. But in PvP, this can be difficult, especially stacked with the Cyrodiil's Crest set. This could be a huge problem to deal with. But uh, 
we'll see. It does, of course, have the counter of Purge, but reapply every four seconds. That's a pretty low cooldown. So we'll have to see how this plays out. This set is one that I'm worried might be a little too overtuned for Zerg PvP. We'll have to see how it works, uh, though, in the Zerg scenarios. We've got the Steadfast Hero. Um, we got the physical spell resist, max health, and then when you cleanse a negative effect, you gain major protection for 5 seconds, reducing the damage you take by 30%. This is on a 10 second cooldown. More easy major protection access, and this is coming easily to things like Templar. Um, Warden's going to have easy access for this as well with Betty Netch. Yeah, this seems really good. Easy access to that major protection, very strong buff. And then, of course, um, any class can use this, uh, can get this by using the Resto Staff, Mutagen Purge, or even going for the Alliance War Purge. But yeah, this makes Purge really strong. More emphasis on the anti-dot gameplay. We've got a lot of sets here that are added that add negative effects to your character that you should be able to purge off. So I think Zenimax is just emphasizing how important Purge is for PvP here. And then Battalion Defender, max health, max stam, healing done. When you successfully block, you heal yourself or a nearby group member with the lowest health for 2,000 health. This can occur once every one second. Yeah. This, with crits, is going to be the equivalent of, like, I don't know, 2,500 health regen easily. Very, very strong set. This might be a little bit much. It's like having two Troll Kings up in block. We'll see, though. We'll see how it functions. Um... But I feel like this is going to be very, very strong, especially paired with another healing block set. Anyway, let's move on. So, as I had mentioned in the title, guys, um, Snipe got buffed. And it doesn't actually show that Snipe got buffed here, but here's how Snipe got buffed. Updated the interaction between roll dodges and projectiles. Fixed an issue where a projectile would always be dodged if the target was roll dodging at the moment the projectile was created. So what this means is essentially if I was sniping a target on live right now and I started charging my snipe and he rolled, he will dodge that snipe because he rolled at any point during the time I was charging it or during the arc of the arrow towards him. Now what they're changing this to is projectiles can now only be evaded if the roll dodge occurs within one second prior to the impact. So that means that on the PTS, if someone's charging a snipe and I roll as they're charging it, it will still hit me because I'll have rolled early and it won't have been a second prior to the impact. So the way it works on live right now is if you have 10 players spamming snipe on you, you can dodge every single snipe if you roll once every two seconds. And what this change does is it makes it so that you will no longer be able to do that, and you will now have to dodge every one second in order to successfully avoid 10 players sniping you. So this is a massive buff to snipe and dark flare and any ability that has a channel time like that, like crystal frags, hard cast, stuff like that. This is a huge buff to those abilities. And I don't know. I feel like there's already a lot of things that are very strong against a rolling target. I don't think this is a good change, but hey, we'll see when I get on the PTS how it functions. But from my understanding, this is going to make snipe spam very, very good in PvP. Much better than it currently is, which isn't ever a good thing, I think. But hey, there you go. Um, and then here we go. The next piece, damage shields. Updated the behavior of all damage shields. You can now deal a critical strike against an enemy with a damage shield. Your spell and physical resist now reduce incoming damage before it's applied to your shield. And, of course, poisons can now proc even if the damage done by light and heavy attack was fully absorbed by the shield. So, this bottom part here, that's great. That I always think that should have been in there at all times. You, your enchantment should always proc when you hit the shield no matter what. However, this stuff here. The way that damage shields currently function on live is that you can't crit on them, but there is no spell and physical resist calculated into the shield. This essentially homogenizes damage shields into the same kind of defensive technique as other like this defensive build techniques as medium or heavy armor you're again just stacking for physical spell resist and that's it instead of stacking max magica which the shields scale off of so this means that having the biggest shield is no longer the best way to go the best way to go is to have a lot of physical and spell resist and then maybe a small shield on top but yeah this is a huge change to how damage shields function this is a massive change to damage shield builds and this isn't even the biggest thing that's hitting damage shields we're going to scroll down to the sort changes real fast and we're going to take a peek at the damage shield changes that uh that poor sork had to undergo this patch 
We're going to go right to it. Conjure Ward. This ability and its morphs now have a one second cast time. Previously, it was an instant cast. Increase the duration of the shield for Hardened Ward and its morphs to nine seconds from six. And now the Empowered has 14 from nine seconds. <sighs> so I think I can sum this up in just like one, one sentence. Um, the way that you're used to using damage shields in the game right now is no longer how they will function in this coming patch if this change goes through. Damage shields will no longer be a powerful primary defense. They will instead be a preemptive defense that you use when you don't have pressure on you. Now, if you PvP a lot, you know that if you're fighting a good player, they are not going to let you get your damage shields up and you will not be able to beat them. Honestly, this change... Now, this this change to the Hardened Ward, this happened to the Annulment Shield as well. The only shield that didn't get this treatment um, that's Magicka-based is the Healing Ward Shield. But, yeah. Honestly, if you use a Damage Shield as a defense now, I don't know. The Preemptive Cast will still be good, but the second you have pressure on you, your Damage Shield is just essentially no longer a primary defense. It is now a secondary defense. And that is going to be a massive change for a majority of builds that use damage shields in PvP. I don't think this is a good call. A good player will bash the shields like crazy. They'll interrupt you with, with uh, Force Pulse, whatever it is. Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking. Anyway, so there's the damage shield change. What do you guys think about it? Let me know, please, in the comment section, um, your thoughts on this. And yeah, we're just going to keep on keeping here. So there were a few changes to the buffs and debuffs. Um, major and minor evasion are some big ones. They no longer grant a passive chance to dodge. I really like this change. They now reduce the damage you take from AoEs or area of effect attacks by 5% slash 25%. Um, so yeah, all abilities that previously granted them have now been converted to this new effect. And Blade Cloak also grants major evasion. I actually like this. If you play a dodgy medium armor build, a majority of the things that are hitting and killing you are area of effect attacks. So, this essentially is a buff if you play dodgy medium armor. Now, if you're playing a tanky medium armor build, this is a big nerf for you because you're not going to randomly dodge those attacks that you were randomly dodging before. Instead, you're only going to take reduced damage from AoE, in which case you're not taking a lot of damage from anyway because you're already tanky. So, this is a huge nerf to anyone who's playing like the standing there tanky medium armor build however i see it as a kind of a buff to anyone who's playing a dodgy medium armor build that's used to going down to things like aoe's that are undodgeable because a lot of undodgeable are classified as area of effect attacks so i like this change to major mi to major minor evasion i'd love to hear what you guys say you guys have known that in the past i've hated the passive dodge chance there should be no passive chance for them to win a fight in my opinion and uh, I'm glad that that's gone. And I do like what they added here. Um, but anyway, what do you guys think about this one? And then finally, there are some big changes to some minor buffs here. Minor Brutality, Minor Sorcery, Spell and Weapon Damage buffed to 10% from 5%. And then the Prophecy and Savagery also got doubled from 3 to 6%. Huge increase to these buffs here. This is going to be incredible for medium armor builds. Absolutely insane. This change here is going to be awesome. Magicka Templar is going to be really good this patch. Yeah, this is going to be cool. Um, this buff here makes DK really strong, but everyone can get Minor Brutality from po Poisons. So there you go. I'm excited to see this. This makes the Minor Brutality Poisons really worth it. And I really like the Minor Prophecy and Savagery changes as well because we do get more worthwhile out of actually slotting these. The major the major buff is 10%. Now the minor is 6 That's pretty huge. That's more than half, so very, very nice in that department as well. Now, Dragon Knight got a few changes as well. Um, the changes, they say, please read through because they complement each other. They do. Lava Whip got its range decreased to 5 meters from 8. And the stun was removed from Power Lash as well. And then finally, the special attack is also no longer free. So kind of a nerf to the Power Lash ability here. However... The range is only nerfed by one meter because all abilities for all melee distance abilities for a Dragon Knight got increased by two meters. So that is, uh, where is that passive here? That is something that kind of complements that change there that makes up for the fact that we lost one or three meters on the whip there. 
Here it is. Here it is. Elder Dragon. So the Elder Dragon's been changed to make the instant cast abilities one meter per rank. So that, of course, means that a melee-based stamina Dragon Knight is going to have more rank or more range on its uh, melee attacks. So that's pretty sweet. Now, Nightblade got an Assassin's Blade cost increase. A very cheap execute, so not a huge deal, but it is a cost increase. But we've seen that kind of across the classes um, so far. Fully charged heavy attacks will now grant you the Grim Focus stack, which is or two Grim Focus stacks, which is really nice. You don't have to do the light attack weaves. Um, the, t the refreshing path actually has healing now and the healing value matches the damage value of twisting path. So that's pretty sweet because the refreshing path is going to be a really strong heal now, which is pretty sweet. Um, drain power got its damage increased by 20% or 25%. Big increase on that AOE. Interesting to see how that affects things like bomb blade. For your siphoning strikes, they've changed it. So you're fully... Charged heavy attacks restore twice the amount of health and resources for its strikes. So that's pretty cool. Good change, I think, there. Making heavy attacks more accessible for a Nightblade. And then kind of weird changes to Swallow Soul Funnel Health. Funnel Health essentially is going to be a heal. And Swallow Soul is going to be the damage portion. But I think the healing on it got nerfed a little bit. So we'll see how the healing kind of is. But uh, we'll see how it is on the PTS when we get there. But I think this is a decrease in healing to the amount of healing that Swallow Soul gives you. Now back to Sorcerer, guys. Dark Exchange also got a bit of a change. The ability in its morphs now only restore half the resources immediately and the other half over 20 seconds. This kind of de-incentivizes spamming this ability and encourages people to use it periodically throughout a fight, which I kind of like. Dark Exchange was particularly tough to deal with on Stam Sorks, so I think that uh, this might be a good change here, but it might be overkill because that is half a cut, and a lot of people just use it for the spam, so we'll see how the healing is on it. Oh, the, re the health restore remains unchanged, so the healing should be good. Rune Prison has been given uh, some kind of a, uh, a thing that lets you know that the Rune Prison's coming, which is super sweet. We've got a little bit of changes uh, to the pets here, just kind of decreasing the cost of their special attacks, etc., so encouraging people to use pet builds, but not be able to have good shields anymore because they'll just get bashed. <laughs> and just some fixes for Mage's Fury. Overload got some big changes. Overload now essentially replaces your life, your light and heavy attacks, but you still get to use all your weapon and, and uh, skills, etc. But you get the Overload light and heavy attack underneath. Now the damage, of course, of the light and heavy has been cut by quite a lot because you will be able to weave it now. But I do like this change. The big downside, though, is that Sorks have lost their third ability bar. So yeah, a lot of huge changes to Sork this patch that are kind of like game changers. So what do you guys think? Let me know what you think about that. For Templar, Piercing Javelin, Binding Javelin no longer knocks the enemy, or now knocks the enemy down instead of knocking them back. So we still get the knockback on the Aurora Javelin, but we get the knockdown on the Binding Javelin. I actually kind of like this because I always knock people out of my crit rush range with the Binding Javelin. I'm okay with this change. What do you guys think? Puncturing Strikes got increased damage to the target in front of it. On top of it, we got a change to the Spear Wall passive that grants us minor protection for up to three seconds after acting an Adric Spear ability. So essentially, spamming our sweeps and puncturing strikes or whatever is now going to give us the minor protection buff. So that's where we're going to get it from. And we did lose the minor protection buff um, as well, as you can see here. We lost it in the Rune Focus, and Rune Focus has kind of been reworked into a stamina version of Channeled Focus, and we lose the Minor Vitality and Minor Protection. Now, it does seem like Templar's taken a bit of a healing cut here again by losing Minor Vitality. However, the changes that are kind of made to, uh, temp to uh, Medium Armor builds in general, Medium Armor Templar should still have pretty good healing. I think it's more Magicka Templar that's taking the cut from this Minor Vitality loss here. And the minor protection, of course, we get from the Adric Spear passives now. Um, we also saw a change to Radial Sweep. Empowering Sweep is now the physical morph, while Crescent takes the Magicka morph. And I actually really like this. I like that Crescent's the Magicka damage one, simply because the Magicka melee Templar was missing that kind of melee distance spike ultimate. So I really like that Crescent is now that option. Um, and... Uh, most Stamplars opted out of, of Crescent Sweep anyway and go for the Dawnbreaker like myself. So I feel like Crescent is great for the Magicka option here. So that's pretty sweet. 
Spear shards increase the damage done by this ability and luminous shards by 67%. Big increase to the damage of uh, the spear shards here. So, and a big increase to the damage of Blazing Spear. So we should see Blazing Spear damage builds maybe come back. That's a massive damage increase. I'll have to check that on the PTS, but that is huge. 60%, 67. Holy crap. Radiant Destruction got reworked a little bit. The channel time has been greatly reduced. However, the damage that it deals um, has been decreased and the cost has been decreased as well. It, they say it should be about the same, just with a shorter channel time. So it deals around the same amount of damage, just has a shorter channel time. So that's what you guys will see in Radiant Destruction. And then finally, guys, big news. You can repent the same corpse for different Templars. Super dope if you run Repentance on a Templar. So that's a really nice change for Stamplar Sustain as well. Stamplar Sustain getting a lot of love here. A lot of Stamina Templar love for Sustain, which is really nice because that's kind of where they were hurting the most. Now the Warden changes. Increase the damage bonus for each Animal Companion ability slotted to 3% at rank 2, previously at 2%. I like this change because the increased weapon spell damage means that a lot of the other classes that stack better weapon and spell damage than the Warden are going to get better usage or bonus out of that. So the Warden's kind of getting their buff by getting the Animal Companion damage buff here, which I like. I think that that's what they're trying to make up for there, so that's pretty good. The Betty Netch increased the resource restored by 60%. That's insane. Massive sustain increase for the Warden. That's absolutely nuts. And uh, the Betty Netch, of course, re removes a negative effect. So, wow. Great skill. Big buff there. Reduced cost to Cutting Dive. So that's pretty cool. I guess that's what they need. Um, Falcon Swiftness got changed pretty big. The Minor Berserk buff is given to you while you actually have the uh, Falcon's Swiftness just slotted. Um, or sorry, the Bird of Prey morph just slotted. And same with the Minor Evasion buff. So you don't actually need to cast these for the damage buff anymore. However, that means that you'll only have the damage buff on one bar. It is a animal companion skill, so you do get the 3% damage for slotting it, and then 8% for minor berserk, so it's 11% damage increase just to slot this skill. I kind of like this change because it means that you have to be less buff intensive when attacking, um, but you still remain as buff intensive when defending. So I don't know. I like that change for that reason. What do you guys think? Feral Guardian got its damage nerfed. Sadness sadness mode scorch got a cost decrease it's already a very cheap powerful attack so there you go and then the minor toughness bonus is also going to last twice as long and it's also going to be granted uh to a target that i believe has full health when you heal them even if the target was completely overhealed, yeah so even if they're fully healed you can still apply minor toughness so that's going to be really nice it'll allow all wardens to have that minor toughness buff up at all times so it's really nice um, for getting ganked when you're not in combat too. Arctic Blast was given as the class stun for Morden or for Warden. So now we get a projectile that fires out of the Arctic Blast in addition to healing you, and it requires, of course, a target because you have to stun them now. I'm curious to see how much damage this does, how much it heals you. Um, so we'll see how this kind of works. But uh, Warden finally got their class stun. Magical Warden has been begging for this, so I know they always wanted it. So it's good to see it. And then finally, the Blade Cloak change to grant Major Evasion. That's fine. Scatter Shot increased the range to 28 meters from 10 meters. We talked about this. That is going to make it a very powerful and viable bow attack for all kinds of bow builds. So I'm kind of actually excited to see this be a really good bow skill that a lot of people are going to use. That being said, it is pretty trolly for a stun, so we'll see how it works out. 25% uh, damage increase on Impulse. Holy crap. Annulment has the cast time that Hardened Ward got. So damage shield builds, yeah, I don't know what to say. Honestly, damage shields this patch are going to be so bad in PvP. Oh, man, we'll see. We'll see if these uh, changes stick. Evocation, this build now also increases your Magicka recovery by 2 and 4% per piece of light armor worn. It also reduced the cost of Magicka abilities. So passives kind of got slid into here in order for the Grace passive to take over the recovery one. And uh, this one gives some cool stuff. Reduce the effectiveness of snares applied to you by 4% per piece of light armor, and then reduce the cost of sprint by 3% per piece of light armor worn. The reduced sprint cost is really nice, synergizing a really well with a lot of different uh, champion passives as well as sets that light armor has access to. And then this snare... I really like this. I really like this change. Reduce the effectiveness of snares by 4% per piece. That's 20% snare um, resistance, essentially. 
when you just wear light armor. So this keeps light armor mobile versus the heavy, just like medium is going to have an easier time rolling and sprinting. I really like the addition of this to light armor. A light armor warden is going to have 30% snare resistance, just casually. There you go, guys. I like that change. So here's a good change for light armor. Here's not such a good change for light armor. Oh, baby. And then medium armor got a massive change as well. Increase the weapon damage bonus to 15% from 12. 3% more weapon damage here. 5% more weapon damage from the minor buff. Yeah, medium weapon damage builds are going to be really, really good this patch. They're going to be pretty BIS. They're going to be squishy too, but they're going to be pretty BIS, I think. So I'm really excited because I love to play medium weapon damage. So this will be a lot of fun for me again. Different werewolves can now devour the same corpse. That's an awesome change. All right, guys, that is my review of the Merkmire patch. What did you guys think? Honestly, what do you think about this patch? Where do you think it's going to go? And uh, yeah, how do you feel about those shield changes? That's really the big one for me that I'm worried about is those shield changes. Of course, the roll dodge change is on my mind too. But anyway, what do you guys think? If you guys enjoyed that video, hit that like and or subscribe button if you haven't already. If you guys want to catch me live, I stream live on Twitch. You can, of course, get a link to that in the description. And then finally, if you have community content you want to send me, be it cool PvP clips or you even want to feature a cool build yourself on the channel, feel free to send it to ChristopherESO at Hotmail.ca. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today, and I hope to see you next time.